Hello everybody, my name is Brian Bruns. I'm 29 years old and I live in Riverside, California. I'm a recipient of bilateral hip resurfacing surgeries and I wanted to make this video to kind of go over my whole process and experience with the whole thing. I know when I was doing my research, I saw a lot of videos out there, but not a lot of them had to do with younger people. They were always a little bit older and a lot of them weren't athletes. I'm a professional kickboxer and I've done martial arts for the past 13 years. So I have a different experience and I have a different things that I wanted to get out of the surgery. I first started experiencing some kind of hip pain back in October of 2013. Um, as I said, I'm a martial artist and we do a lot of kicking and stuff like that. Um, the real cause for all my issues was actually pretty severe hip impingements, which I didn't know that I had at the time. Through training and stuff like that, I would always have sore hips and it would always bother me after class. It progressively just got worse and worse over the years. Um, I do remember one instance where I was doing a lot of kicks and kicking higher and higher where I had a lot of pain in the front of my hips, which now looking back on it, I believe was a labrum tear. And like I said, because of the impingements, I didn't have the, the spacing in the joint for it to move around how it should, especially while kicking and doing martial arts. So through the years of trying to kick more and more, through all the running, through all, all of the training and stuff that I was doing, cartilage slowly wore down. So I had caught it earlier than they might have been able to do a surgery where they get rid of the impingement and they shave the bone down, but I wasn't able to do that at the time when I went in. So over the years and years, the hip pain definitely became worse and worse. And even though I was stretching every day and trying to increase my flexibility and range of motion, because of the impingements getting worse and the cartilage loss, it was just slowly getting worse and worse over time. Um, back in about 2018 would probably be the where it got to where it was too much to handle. I couldn't go for any running. Um, I was still training and I was still competing, believe it or not, but I wasn't getting you know the proper rest and recovery because of sleep. The, the pain was just too much to be comfortable really at any time. Um, I couldn't make it for a walk around the block before I would start getting some pain. And then after every training class, I was just, I couldn't almost, almost couldn't stand up straight because there was so much pain going on in my hips. So finally in 2018, I went to the doctor. Um, I actually went to a physical therapist first who ended up taking x-rays and they weren't apparently a very good physical therapist because they, they noticed the hip impingements and they were the ones that said I could maybe get around it. They didn't say anything about the joint spacing, which was the loss of cartilage. And uh, so that was the end of probably mid 2019 when I ended up doing that. Um, and because of the way insurance works in California, I wasn't able to get insurance until start of 2020 essentially. 2020 rolls around and I get my first appointment um, in January of 2020. So I go see one of the doctors expecting that he's gonna tell me that I need the FAI, which is the femoral acetabulum impingement surgery, where they go and they just reshape the bone so that it will work properly. And because of the amount of cartilage loss, he told me that was not an option. And really he told me that I didn't have an option because of my age, um, I couldn't get a total hip replacement. And basically what he said is when the pain is too much for you to walk and do any kind of daily activities, then they have no other choice to do a total hip replacement and basically gave me no options. Um, so that was pretty depressing to hear, very difficult to process to go through for sure. Um, kind of went on and just, just did what I could. Um, I stayed active as much as I could, um, but it definitely got worse and worse over the next few months, especially just mentally because it was very defeating hearing that I had no options other than that. So. Through my own research, I ended up finding out about hip resurfacing. And I found a couple articles online and stuff that they would do it in younger patients and they could get back to being and living an act, uh, active lifestyle. I found this really great forum called Surface Hippie. So if you are going through this, I, I highly recommend going through that uh, and reading. There's tons and tons of people on there with all of their, their experiences through the whole thing. For me, it was a little bit hard just because, like I said, um, the sport that I am doing and the age that I am, again, the majority of the people who are young for a hip resurfacing are still like in their 40s and 50s, and I'm under 30 by the time I'm getting this surgery. So it was, it was just a different perspective on their side. Talked to the same doctor who gave me the initial diagnosis of the severe hip arthritis. And he initially said that he doesn't like that surgery because there's complications. 
but the more you kind of look into it, it was because of the implants they used to use 15, 20 years ago, which are not even on the, the, the market anymore. They took those off and the, uh, the implants and stuff that they have now are much, much better performing. So I got a referral to a different doctor. It was Dr. Anwar um, at Kaiser LA. And he called me and kind of discussed all of the differences between the two, which I already knew because I had done so much research at this point. Um, he said I was a great candidate for it and we kind of just moved on from there. Due to all the stuff going on with COVID, I wasn't able to get it right away because they were so backlogged and uh, operating rooms were shut down. And because this was an elective surgery, they couldn't like rush me into doing anything. I did the left side in August, August 26th of 2020. Um, and then about three months later, I ended up doing the right side, November 18th. In terms of the recovery, um, even though they both had similar issues, the recovery was actually pretty different for both sides, which was kind of interesting. The left side had less cartilage, um, more arthritis. Um, and what had happened was because my leg was so used to moving in a certain way, um, a lot of the muscles just weren't firing correctly. So I remember the first probably week or so of after the surgery, I had so much trouble just picking my knee straight up in front. Um, I'm gonna add a clip here that shows just kind of the motion that I did have, and this was about a week after the surgery. So the day of the surgery, it felt like it was impossible to pick my knee straight up in front. Um, after about the two week mark, it just, the, the healing process just kind of jumped from there and it was very, very easy. There's a lot of videos out there of people just walking around kind of chilling on the first day um, after surgery and, you know, back in a cane and stuff like that. So when I saw that and I was going through this, I was like, why the heck is this happening? But it turns out it was because of all the, the athletic stuff that I did before and I was basically using the wrong muscles to do all of those motions my body kind of had to reuse, relearn to use the correct muscles through the whole process. Um, I think I spent about two weeks, maybe a week and a half with, with crutches, and then I spent another week and a half, two weeks on a cane. And then after that, it was, I could still feel, you know, it, was, it wasn't quite there, but I was able to move around pretty comfortably without any assistance. Around the six week mark, I got approval to start working out at the gym. Um, obviously no weighted stuff with my legs um, at that point. So I just did a lot of upper body stuff and then the PT exercises that they had me do for the hip itself. When it comes to the right side, um, it was kind of the exact opposite. So this one was really bad in the beginning and it recovered really fast. And my right side actually came back very quickly in the beginning, but had some lingering stuff that was going on afterwards. So starting out, I was able to lift my knee up much easier and move it around. Um, I think I was on the crutches just for the first two days. And uh, after that, I was on the cane for maybe a week or two. Um, and then I got the approval to start working out at the gym at four weeks this time. Um, the complications that were a little bit more on that was some of the, the muscles, like stabilizing muscles in there, were just not working properly. So it, it was fine for the day to day stuff, but whenever I started doing any kind of uh, workouts and stuff like that, it's a little bit awkward just moving around. Then at the 12 week mark, I was allowed to start doing some more activities. That's about three months. Some doctors actually say that you can start running after three months, but I have not heard good results in that. The majority of doctors say six to 12 months, kind of depending on the case. Um, at 12 weeks, I started uh, boxing where I wasn't doing any kind of running, no impact, but I was a lot of twisting and rotating the hips. Um, I still wasn't doing anything full power. And I was doing absolutely no kicks during this point either. I didn't actually start kicking until the six month mark where I was allowed to start running. Still haven't been doing a ton of running. I've only tried once and it, the joint itself felt okay. Just felt a little unstable while I was doing it. And uh, I'm kind of just kind of going back and forth on, I don't really feel like I need to run yet. So I'm just kind of giving it some more time. Um, in terms of kicking, I haven't been kicking a lot, but I've started going through and trying to build the muscle to kick. And uh, again, the hip joint itself feels very, very strong, very good, but the muscles around them are still kind of figuring them out. At this point, my left side is about 11 months post-op and my right side is about eight. I think it'll be uh, in two weeks, it'll be eight months post-op. Um, day-to-day stuff is 
no problem. Uh, if I had any advice for anybody who's going through the same thing that I was, um, number one is do your research. Go on that, that website, Surface Hippie, and just read through everybody's stuff, um, the good and the bad, because there, there's definitely complications that can happen. So you should at least want to be aware of all that. The other bit of advice is after you get the surgery, I would definitely say not to push it right away. Um, take your time into everything because it's going to take time and the only thing you're going to do is end up setting yourself back a little bit. Um, it was probably a week after the first surgery and I was feeling pretty good. I was still had, uh, was in crutches at this point, but I was decided I was going to go for a long walk. And uh, once I got, you know, where my hip was giving out, I had the most trouble coming back and then the next two days it was just so sore. just from the, the surgery again and not fully being healed. Um, so my, my advice for that would definitely be to take things slow. There's also going to be some good days, some bad days. Um, for the most part, you're going to feel a little bit better every day. Um, there will be some days where you just, you're maybe you moved around too much the day before, you did a little bit too much, and all of a sudden it comes back and it's just very sore. You don't want to do anything that day. The other thing that will kind of happen with me is the first three or four weeks, you make this huge improvement where everything's good. And then you start doing more and more and the it's like diminishing returns on how fast you're healing but you are healing you're slowly getting better so just keep on it so as it goes moving forward um, i'd like to keep everybody updated and put out stuff so so people have kind of something to follow th along with um, i'm planning on putting out a bunch of training videos just to kind of see what i'm capable of doing now i really wish i would have caught myself and and filmed everything before um, just to, to show how much improvement you can actually get from getting the surgery. Um, before I had trouble kicking just above my own knee and now I'm already starting to kick as high as my head uh, for roundhouse kicks and stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty crazy how much better it is. So other than that, thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope I helped. If you have any other questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, throw them in the comment box down below. That way other people can kind of see the questions and answers and stuff also. Um, I'm planning on making some follow-up videos from this, more training based and stuff like that to kind of show the capabilities of what these things can do. Um, so, thank you.